Hello. <clears throat> My goodness, we've got. There we go. And that'll look a little bit better. Not so bright in here. I'm a couple minutes late. Oh my goodness, it's been a hectic evening. I was totally running behind, but I'm here now. I see one person watching already. Welcome. Um, you know, while I'm waiting for people to pop on, it's always a little bit awkward because um, no one's really there when you first say hello and there's this spinning wheel that tells me I'm about to go live or I am live and I'm never really sure and so I always feel like, what can I do while I'm waiting? It's like super awkward. So usually I try to look around and fidget with things and make myself look busy because <laughs> I don't want you all to know how awkward it is. <clears throat> so, um, okay, I see people coming on. Hi, Robin. Hi, Sharon. Glad you could make it tonight. It is so beautiful outside. Hi, Cher. Um, oh, I just wanted to sit out on our porch and chat with my husband because it is absolutely gorgeous outside. And then I looked at the clock and realized we had to eat dinner yet. And that my live um, was in like less than an hour. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Jean. And um, I'm like, oh, darn it. I have to hurry up and eat and get up there and get my live going. I didn't want to keep all of you waiting. So um, for those of you who are new to my lives, I absolutely love it when you say hello and tell me where you are watching from. One of my very favorite things to do is go through and see where everyone is from afterwards. And uh, I like to just see how far and near I can uh, connect with people. So <clears throat> I also see a lot of you sharing my video. Thank you so much. I love it when you share. It makes me really happy. And um, I absolutely am so passionate about being creative and sharing creativity uh, with others that when you share this video on your, um, on your Facebook timeline, I think that's what it's called, um, it helps other people to see my video and you help support my small business. And I love that and appreciate that. I see some new names here, Rachel and Kathy. Hello. So glad that you could make it. Um, I see that Rachel finally made it to a live. Yay. Exciting. Also remember that um, <clears throat> there are prizes for commenting. So the more you interact with me, the better your chance at a prize um, and also prizes for sharing. So when you share, you're entered for a prize and that's always so much fun. Last week, um, we made um, these cards that I like to call simple to stepped up. So I started with some simple stamping, beautiful card. We stepped it up a little bit, added some pretty paper, a little bit of ribbon, and another layer of paper. And then I did some die cutting and added some really fancy, shiny, foily paper. And um, colored my ribbon with a, a stamp and blend to match it to the other color scheme in my card. And we made all three of these cards <clears throat> using the same layout. This is a really great technique. If you get creative block, you use the same layout and just basically boost up your card. So that's my first prize tonight for commenting. I'll send all three of these cards in the mail to you. And my prize for sharing is a brand new, never opened roll of braided linen trim. Um, this is from the, the mini catalog that's active right now. It's the Mossy Meadow stuff. So that's my other prize for sharing. Um, we'll do that in a minute. Tonight, I am playing with the art gallery stamp set. And I think the bundle is called like fine art floral or something like that. 
Um, I might have to change my description because I didn't realize that this stamp set is called Art Gallery. But we're playing with that. And the really, really pretty, oh, the paper. Fine Art Floral Designer Series paper. You always know when you see these little chunks in here that um, they are getting some love. So I have been showing this paper lots of love. It's gorgeous. And I have an online class right now, a class to go going on featuring the bundle and the paper. <clears throat> and um, that is, you can pre-order till the 15th. So um, you definitely don't want to miss out on that. I want to see if I have a little bit of information on that here. I am just a little bit we go let's see if I can find it bear with me people yeah I'm going to show you this one art gallery bundle so you've got the stamp set the dies the pretty paper and in my class this is the Taj Mahal bundle that you can add on option number one that includes this bundle. Um, you also get some champagne rhinestones and the fine art floral ribbon. Um, so gorgeous. I have that going on right now for 10 more days. You can purchase um, the entire thing from me or you can skip the bundle and just do these um, embellishments and paper. With this class, you're gonna get to make 12 cards to each of six designs. So pretty awesome. It gets delivered right to your door. All right, I think it's time for me to do some stamping and prizes first. So shed a little light on the situation here. Okay, remember commenting, you get these three pretty cards. It's easier to do prizes this way because you can see the cards a little bit better. Our winner for commenting is Cindy McCullough. So congratulations, Cindy. Thank you so much for joining me on my live and commenting and sharing the love with me. Um, I'm gonna get these in the mail to you. Uh, I don't have your address though, and I have a new way for you to get me your address because so many people were forgetting to email me or they were going to my junk mail. So in the description of this video, there is a link to claim your prize. Um, so use that link and you can claim your prize there and I will get everything in the mail to you. All right, next we have the braided linen trim, Mossy Meadow. And this is for sharing and the winner is Bonnie Olive. So thank you so much for sharing, Bonnie. I gotta tell you, I see a lot more people watching than sharing and, um, or they're sharing and they're not commenting shared and so then I don't get your name in the prize drawing. So if you're sharing, even um, if you, because Facebook changed up their algorithms and what I can see, um, don't just think if you share, it enters you in. You definitely have to say shared so that I know. All right. <clears throat> Hi, Jessica. Hi, Kate. You know what? I saw somebody ask me if I liked the in colors, the new ones. I think Melanie did, and they're gorgeous. Have you guys seen the cover of the annual catalog yet? I can't open this baby up, but look at that. Um, you always get some clues about what's coming in the catalog just by looking at the cover. And I see some new colors here. I see a pink that we're not used to. I see um, some new paper, some new stamps that we don't have. I see some new embellishments and ribbon. Um, I see kind of a new neutrally peachy color. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, all this new goodies, you can get your hands on right now if you are a discount shopper. And if you want to order before everyone else gets to order, uh, message me because I will tell you how and you can save 20%. Okay. I have to warn you all that because I am, oh, Jean asked me. Yes, I love the new in colors, Jean. They're gorgeous. 
because I was so late, I don't have all my stuff cut. So you're going to get to see what that looks like. <laughs> Tonight, in addition to art gallery stamp set, and by the way, I'm not using the dies with it. So I'm going to show you some ideas. What we make here, my chair is stuck. What we make tonight, you're going to be able to make with leftovers from your products from my class to go if you order that. I'm also going to show you a simple, simple way to use your gilded leafing. You know I like simple and I like pretty. So I'm going to show you a simple way to use this um, that maybe you haven't thought about before with these cards. All right. So... We're going to start with a piece of basic black and both cards, we're making two cards tonight. Both of them are making our tall cards. So I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter. And I know that I say this every single time I make a tall card, but I'm going to say it again. <clears throat> when you make a tall card, you need to score your card base if you want a nice, crisp folded edge because the grain of the paper runs the length of the the grain of the paper runs the length of it and when you fold it without scoring it you break that grain and you get these rough bumpy edges on your fold now if some of you haven't figured this out before i'm maybe about to blow your mind on our trimmer we have a ruler up top and a ruler at the bottom and we all know that this arm folds out just like this for when we have our big 12 inch or bigger pieces. Okay, I need to score this at five and a half. So I'm gonna line up this top one at five and a half and I'm gonna line up the bottom one at five and a half. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go right through and score these both. So I don't have to line it up, close it, take it out all that jazz i just line it up and do it so what do you think of that tip a good one okay next i need another piece of basic black and hang on bear with me one second i gotta get a ruler because, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna cut this piece down to four and a half inches. Mm. Yep, four and a half by three and a quarter. And then let's pick um, our designer series paper. Let me see. This piece might be the right size. Let me look. Ooh, I think it might be perfect. Is this three? Yep. So we're going to go three by four and a quarter. So we are a quarter inch smaller than the piece we just cut. <clears throat> All right, and of course this is a black card, so I gotta have an inside. Oh, Cindy did not know that about the grain of the paper. Yes, that's what keeps those edges nice and crisp when you do a tall card. Um, and it looks like Robin said that was a good tip and uh, Karen thought it was pretty clever. So I think lining up both sides is a great way. I did a stamp a stack, which I'm going to feature in a blog post next week. Um, <clears throat> and that's how I got a whole bunch of cards done because I just line them up and then I cut them all at once. So it works really, really awesome for that. Okay, these are scraps I don't need. Set these aside. Okay, so we've got our 
card base ready. We've got our inside ready. This is five and a quarter by four, and that's going to slide in here. I'm not sure how I'm going to stamp that yet. And we've got our layer here. Now, this layer is done. We can glue this together with my seal. We can hear angels singing when we use our seal because it's so smooth and I absolutely love it. Hi, Sandy, how are you? So glad you could join me. Did everyone have really nice weather? I saw that Jean said everything in North Dakota is just brown. And so while the weather is nice, it's hard to get really super excited about it. <clears throat> I don't blame you for that. That's probably the hardest part about like when winter gets long is that it's just like brown and not very clean and kind of ugly looking out there. All right, I'm going to actually stamp the inside of my layer first. So I'm going to do some cool party with our flower. And this is a two step stamp. I'm going to come in from this side. So I like to do a pool party and you know what? I think I'm going to be bold and try something. I haven't tried this color combination and it's not a real flower color combination, but we're going to try it tonight and you're going to see why as I make the second card. That's right. I'm getting out my memento for a flower. Okay. Line this up. So we did pool party and black. What do you think of that flower? Better make sure I clean this one off for sure so I don't get it accidentally. <clears throat> Okay, and I also am going to use, so this yellow, this darker yellow here in this paper is the um, bumblebee in color. So I've got a scrap of that here, and I'm just going to use my Label Me Lovely punch and punch that out. I was reading the comments and I see that Carol does not have bowling anymore. So she is here watching. Um, super excited for that, Carol. Glad that you could join. All right, I'm looking for my bumblebee ink. And what we're gonna do is a little tone on tone stamping. I'm gonna grab my flower here. And I'm just going to stamp this up in that corner like that. There's really no rhyme or reason. <clears throat> I see some more people popping on, watching. Say hello when you pop on. I love to connect with you. Um, and the sentiment I'm going to use for this card is thank you. There it is. There we go. So how many of you have the art gallery bundle? Was this the first thing you bought out of the spring catalog? I think for a lot of people, it was like one of the very first things they bought because that paper is so gorgeous. I hope I'm inspiring lots of you tonight with this one. All right, then I just stamped thank you here on my label. So one of the things I really love to do is punch out a label and stamp one of the images right on it. I think it is so, so neat that way. Vicki has it and loves it. Sharon doesn't have it yet. Well, Sharon, after you see what you can do with this, you might want it after this. 
<clears throat> Sandy has it and loves it. It is so versatile. So, so many different sentiments with I miss you and congratulations and happy birthday and good luck. There's even a sorry for sympathy, best wishes for like a um, graduation or for uh, a wedding would be wonderful. All right. Now we've got a lot going on here. I'm just going to set this stuff aside for now. We'll put this all together in a minute. I promised you some tips with gilded leafing. That's the stuff in the catalog. It's new. It's gorgeous. Um, we're going to talk about that. You can get heat and stick powder to use it. And I wasn't such a fan when I was playing with that. So I've got a new tip for you tonight. The first thing I did was close my window because um, this, if you order this from the catalog, this container is very full. It is very prone to static cling and it will blow everywhere if you're not careful. So <clears throat> I've got my card base here. And I have got some tear and tape. What I'm going to do is tear off a piece here of our tear and tape. And I am going to stick this on my card front. We're really hoping that it's straight. This looks pretty straight to me. And I'm going to get a second piece. And do the same. I've got a little extra here. That's okay. No big deal. Okay, just like so. All right, now... Grab my scissors, my snips, and I am going to trim the edges of this to match, to line up with my card edge. Just like so. And a piece of it went flying. Now, tear and tape is, it's double-sided tape, in essence, is what it is. So. We've stuck the sticky side down onto our card base. Cut it to the size we need it. And next we're gonna pull this off and be left with some sticky residue that we're gonna put our gilded leafing on. When you do this, you are gonna want a brush handy. I just grabbed one of our blender brushes. It works really great for this. And you're gonna want a container. Um, some people keep their gilded leafing in a container. I like to kind of just use it to do cleanup and um, try to only use what I need out of this little container. So we're going to peel these off. I hope that you can see. It's easy for me to see that I have peeled this off and left it behind. I think in the light you can kind of see it shining there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in here. This is so full, oh my gosh, you get so much of this stuff. It will last you forever. And then I just like to stick it down. On my sticky pieces. And I think this should be good. Now, I'm closing this right away because if I breathe too heavy, it will go everywhere. Okay, and now I've got my brush. 
and I'm just going to start to brush away at my page. Now I have, of course, two simple straight lines on this card base, but Terran tape is pretty pliable. And I think you could trim it down to some, like to half the width. And you could really use this to accent some of the pieces on your card layer if you wanted to. In fact, I haven't tried that yet, but we could try it right now and see how this works. So I'm just working to brush all the extra off. What do you think? Pretty simple. There's not a lot of mess. We're not using the heat tool. It's leaving an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous gold design here behind. Now let's, let's put this idea to the test that we could use our tear and tape for some accents. I'm gonna try, I wanna try this. Okay, so I'm just going to take a piece, and I don't know that I want super, super thick, like wide, so I'm going to just gonna cut this one here, and I will run it kind of along our flower. You know what, Sharon, I didn't think that I would want it all over my dogs or my cats, but um, this method, the way I've been doing it, I have totally been able to contain it, um, believe it or not, with two cats and two dogs. So just letting you know that for those of you who are curious, I do have pets and it's been okay to use. Okay, I'm trying something new, totally live here. We'll see how this turns out. Um, Robin says it looks so much easier than heating it. You have no idea how much easier this is than heating it. Oh my gosh, so much. So I've just taken the tear and tape and I've cut it down. I've cut it like the long way so I've cut these in half and kind of cut them off at angles to match um, the flowers. And these are going to pull off just fine. Oh. This one, I pulled the whole thing off. Hopefully. Let's see if I can get just my paper off here. Let me let that set for a little bit longer. And let's try this last one. Boy, that bugger is really stuck on there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is way easier. Um, than using the heat tool. May not look it right now as I'm trying to get these little pieces off, but we also have your take your pick tool that would work great. Okay, so I've got stickies on here and I've got extra in my thing. So I'm just gonna put these on. I will say that when I am 
playing around with this stuff. I don't really want my cats near the table so they don't jump up by mistake, but I'm trying to get all this in the corner. I think I need a little more here. I'm just trying to make sure it's all on the sticky parts. I can still feel some sticky, so I don't want to waste my sticky. Okay, and we'll just brush off the extra here. That's what we've got the brush for. So yeah, we've got some details here with our gold on our flower too. Pretty schnazzy. Okay, I'm just gonna set this over here. All right, let's put our card together now. Um, I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. You know what, I'm gonna use the edges right away, get this out of the way. <laughs> For those of you that are new, I don't like dimension or the, using the edges of dimensionals. I like fight it with every grain of my being until I have to use it. So I've been training myself to use the edges sooner. And that's what I did here. Okay, I am going to just stick this on the center of our card. So we're hiding some of that pretty, but not too much of it. And then I'm gonna pop up this thank you right in the center. Oh, Robin says great accent to a wedding card. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hi, Kathy and Judy. Yes, it is way easier than using the heat and stick, which I was determined to find a way to use this gilded leafing um, that wouldn't require the heat and stick because I'm just not a multi-step um, kind of gal. I really like things super duper simple. All right, let's put our inside layer in. Our cool party with black looks pretty nice if I do say so myself. All right, there we go. So here's our first card. Little accenting on that flower using our tear and tape and not having to use our heat tool, which if you like the heat and stick powder, I have seen that done and that works great. Um, it does look beautiful when it's done. It's just, I like simple, it's not my style. So this is what I did here. All right, so our first card is done. Uh, our next card is a fun fold. Are we ready for that? Fun fold, fun fold. We're using gilded leafing and our tear and tape again, just so that you can see me demonstrate it another time. And it's simple, so of course I want to do it that way instead of another way. All right, so here we have our card base again. Remember, I already scored it because I scored it when I cut the first one. I have gilded leafing here still on my desk. All right. Okay. Now, we are going to... Get out our paper, and I'm going to use this fun painted 
Um, it's the other side of the paper we just used. We're going to use this fun color. And I am going to go and cut this down to 7 eighths of an inch wide. And it will be five and three eighths of an inch long. So we have two pieces that are seven eighths inches wide and five and three eighths inches long. Okay. And now I need another piece. Let me think about this. So the next piece needs to be two and an eighth inches wide, I think. Let me double check my measurement here. I didn't write all this down because I was like totally running behind. But yes, two and an eighth inches wide. I just dropped my card here. So lining this up to two and an eighth. And then the same, we're going to do five and three eighths. Just like this. So we got three of these here. All right, now Set this aside, we'll be using it again, but do a little stamping. Oops, I already had one out here. There we go. Okay, I need this fancy flower and I want the stem. So let me mount that really quick. I am curious how many of you stamp right on your designer series paper. I'm going to do that right now. And some of you might think that I am breaking a law by doing it, but I promise you I am not. I am using my Memento ink. You could use Stazon for this. Um, if you want to really make sure you get a nice crisp image. So I'm stamping that flower right there in our black ink. And then I'm going to do the next, the stem, the same. Hi, Sharon from Northern California. So glad you could watch me live. I'm excited you could make it. All right, and I'm going to stick this stem on here. So we've got an all black flower and I'm going to make this into a birthday card. So let me find happy birthday because you always need birthday cards and this card is going to be really striking when we're done with it. Jean sometimes does, Julie does it. Sometimes it just seems too pretty, but this one, it works really great for. Okay, so I've got happy birthday down there. Hey, are we ready for our gilded leafing again? Set some of my stuff aside here. Grab my tear and tape. And we just need one little strip here. I'm just going to do it right here above the happy birthday. So it doesn't have to be big and fancy. It can be just a little accent piece. Just simple like that.
All right. So now I'm just going to tear this off. And we will head on over to our gilded leafing jug. I'm going to try to use up what I have in here. We'll see how that goes. Sometimes it wants to stick to your um, container you have it in. So. Try and use up these little pieces. A little really goes a long way. I've made, you know, a number of cards this way. And um, as you could see by my uh, bin, it looked like I hadn't made a dent in this at all. I think I am gonna just be able to fill this in perfectly with scraps. I'm literally, because it sticks to the static, that's working out really well for me to grab these out of the corners. So we're learning a little tip there too. All right, now here we come with our brush. The blending brushes are not too firm. They're not too soft. They work really great to get the excess off. What's nice is they have a firm handle to kind of grab them. There, just like this. Pretty simple. Pretty bold and stunning, don't you think? Just adds a little something different than ribbon does, I think, and our embossing um, powders. Okay, now here we got to put our fun fold together. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way. All right. I have got my card base and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one inch in from the edge all the way to the fold line. So I'm going to go to that one inch, line it up here and cut all the way to my score line. Now there is, if you haven't noticed on our trimmer before, a little bit there, there we go. There is a line right here and right here that you can use to line up with your scoring line. And now we need to do the same here on this end. So I'm just going to go down and I'm going to line up that line with my score line. Perfect. Perfect. And now we're going to get to putting our card together. I got a lot of gluing, so I'm grabbing my silicone mat here. I don't want to get glue all over, especially with this Guild of Leafing. All right, we are going to glue these side flaps down to our card base, just like so. And now we're going to start gluing our card layers together. I'm going to glue this on the front, center that up. You know, today I had my window open all day, my windows here at the house. And I heard my first spring peepers here in Wisconsin. That's really something when you hear those spring peepers come out, you know, spring is here. 
Okay, so now we've got these panels on the side. And then I'm just gonna glue this panel down. I heard my first one and it's also a sign of spring because I got my first mosquito bite yesterday. And I was just thinking about that because I can hear the spring peepers lightly out my window tonight. All right, so there we have our card. We're actually done. Now, of course, you're gonna put a little piece on the inside so that you can write on it. I also tied some twine around um, my sample card here, but here's your inside so you can write. What do you think? That was pretty darn simple, but that was a cute fun fold. What do you, don't you think? It's easy to make. Someone gets that in the mail and thinks, oh, what a cute card. I love how they open that up. Um, and here is our other card. And I, my sample card, I didn't try the gilded leafing on the flower, so you can kind of see both. And if I had more time, I'd probably do a little bit more gilded leafing um, arranging, but I didn't want to keep you guys while I was playing around with that. <clears throat> and for those of you who are curious, I have here a sneak peek of the cards that you will get to make in my online class. And I have another fun fold in it. So for those who are um, curious about my class to go, here's one of the cards we make in the class. And I have this other one, absolutely gorgeous. And then a fun fold here that opens like such. Isn't that cute? Super, super adorable. These cards turned out absolutely stunning. I know that you will love them. If you want to order my class to go, you can find a link right on my website, www.rosegrunewald.com. For those of you who have to get some supplies, I would absolutely be thrilled if you chose me as your demonstrator and ordered from my online store. My host code for April 2021 is 94B4U37H right here. Uh, when your order is under 150, please use that host code. That's what helps me to get all the stuff for your prizes. If it's over 150, skip the code and let's chat so we can talk about getting you a 20% discount so you can get your stamp and supplies on a budget. Okay, that's all I have for you tonight, guys. Oh my gosh, I feel a little blah because I didn't really have anything ready to go. Uh, so hopefully it wasn't too hectic for all of you watching. You kept me com uh, company really wonderfully, and I so appreciate that. I will be live again right here next Monday, same time, same place, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here in my Stampin' Studio in New Holstein. If you're catching the replay of this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you keep all my videos in one handy place. Otherwise, make sure you like and follow my Facebook page so you can catch me live next week. All right, I am out of here. I hope you have a great evening. I hope you enjoy this wonderful spring weather and I will be stamping with you soon.